this week's construction review weekly roundup and construction news in Africa. In this week, Kenya to upgrade more international airport at a cost of 66 million US dollars. Harare to invest more in roads and water infrastructure. Cairo's ultra green complex to feature energy efficient technologies. A housing project worth 200 million US dollars is marked for Uganda by Shelter Africa. From Nigeria, Dangote has announced cement price cuts. And finally, in our event highlights, we take a focus on the EnvironCon 2014, which took place last month on 22nd to 24th in South Africa. Welcome, I'm Yvonne Adeva. We start off in Kenya now where there are plans to upgrade the Moy International Airport at a cost of 66 million US dollars. The French Agency for Development, AFD, has already signed a deal that will see the upgrading of the airport located in Mombasa. The loan will be used by the Kenya Airport Authority, KAA, to renovate airside pavements, airfield ground lighting, and to upgrade the water and power supply to the airport. This is in a bid to keep the airport at recommended international aviation standards and practices, and this is according to Lucy Mboba, the KAA Managing Director. Upgrading more international airports will involve installation of uh, two enhanced 33 kV electric feeders to help boost power supply at the airport. KAA had earlier on announced their intent to upgrade the airport this year where the authority is to build a new runway, terminal building and power supply boosters. In the southern Africa, Harare is planning to invest more money in roads construction and establishment of more water infrastructure. The City Council last week unveiled an annual budget worth 273 million US dollars with a large portion going towards construction and rehabilitation of roads and water infrastructure. Among planned developments include reconstruction and rehabilitation of 53 kilometers of roads across Harare municipality. The government has already set aside 31 million US dollars to buy roads maintenance equipment and will deploy functional teams for the same. Asphalt overlay will be carried out on 8 kilometers of roads in the CBD and trunk roads, while 120 kilometers of road will be regraveled and compacted. There will be construction of six foot bridges, while broken road signs will be replaced. The civil works plans planned also in involve unblocking of 16 kilometers of stormwater pipes. With regards to water infrastructure, the council will undertake rehabilitation of Morton Jaffrey, Prince Edward Water Treatment Works, and the file and crow Road treatment plants. And now over to Egypt, where Cairo's upcoming ultra-green complex is to feature energy-efficient technologies. The upcoming Cairo's gate residents will take the use, using of energy saving and technologies in buildings to another level by minimizing environmental impacts using a host of technologies. It will feature wind catchers, wind turbines, geothermal cooling, solar panels, solar heater tubes and wind turbines. Construction of the complex is set to commence in March 2015 with completion expected in 2019. The designers of the building, Vincent Calabout Architectures, have before this undertaken similar projects with focus on environmental sustainability. They designed the Dragonfly concept that proposed a vertical farm for New York and the Agora Garden, a self-sufficient building which is under construction in Taipei, China. The Gresh residence will feature a total of a thousand apartments spread across nine levels with commercial, retail and residential spaces. And now we move over to the east where we feature Uganda's housing project which is worth 200 million US dollars but that has been marked by Shelter Africa. 20,000 Uganda citizens will benefit from the new housing project to be, to be implemented by the company in collaboration with the Ministry of Land, Housing and Urban Development. The project will be in, developed over a period of four years where 4,000 commercial and social housing units, schools, health centers and rest management, management facilities will be constructed. According to Uganda Prime Minister, the government is committed to providing affordable houses for its citizens and therefore will support institutions seeking to improve housing. 
The project implementation team for Shelter Africa met with the Prime Minister who was briefed of the project by the Minister of Land, Housing and Urban Development, Dawoodi Nikereko. And now over to Nigeria, where Dangote Cement has announced price cuts for the various cement grades two months after the prices were revised downwards. According to the company, cement price has been rising since 2005 until their current intervention. Mr. Dem Deva Kumar Edwin, the group managing director of Dangote Cement, confirmed the company will sell 32.5 cement grade at a at 6.04 US dollars per 50 kg bag, while the higher 42.5 grade is to sell for 6.95 US dollars per bag. The steps taken in is in line with the company's commitment to the nation's dreadful need for the development of infrastructure and boosting federal and state governments' ongoing efforts to reducing the near 20 million housing deficit in Nigeria. Group Managing Director of the Gote Senate has said the cutting down prices was in response to the huge infrastructure and housing deficit in Nigeria. News from the events desk has it that Envas finally presented the EnviroCon for the fourth time in 2014 with a one-of-a-kind conference in South Africa last month. The conference took place in Pretoria on the 22nd to 24th. The timing of the conference was so that it coincided with the end of the year calendar thereby offering delegates current environmental topics and the events that took place in the whole of 2014. The conference was structured in a manner that knowledge transfer remains central to the event, thereby equipping the delegates towards making decisions and actions which might need to be made or taken in 2015. Among the sessions included sustainable development, energy efficiency, emissions and carbon finance and environmental management systems. This is all we had for you this week. Thank you for watching. For more news and information on the construction industry in Africa, please visit our website on www.theconstructionreviewonline.com. Until next week, I'm Yvonne.